Hey, Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheets. Hey, we're sorry, we already recorded a beginning part, so we're just going to probably get straight to it this time. Sheets, do you want to touch on the things you were talking about before, really quick, before we do? Yeah, just a couple of things. Look for a couple of new uh, tools that we're going to be adding to the, to the website. Not as kind of uh, in-depth or whatever, but just kind of little fun things. To, uh, one of the things, kind of like a sort of a live scoring tool for some of the sports that don't have it. Um, I shouldn't say don't have it. For those of you who've ever played tennis DFS specifically, what you'll sometimes get is when you have an all, you know, when you have one one player drop out and someone else replaces them. For whatever reason, the DraftKings app never deals with the scoring of that replacement match for about five hours. Um, so what I've done is create kind of a little live scoring app that will allow you to figure out how many points you're going to get when they finally put it up there. And there, there, there's a little bit of use for that for MMA as well. Those of you who did play, you'll know you'll know what I'm talking about. We're sometimes just waiting on those last 10 minutes before they put the scores up. And you want to know whether you took it down or not. Um, so you just be on the lookout for that. The other thing that we touched on pretty briefly was uh, our results from yesterday. Uh, Bobby was fortunate enough to cash in, 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 I think, at least one of the big ones. No, the big one's on DK, but none of them on FanDuel. DK has been on FanDuel. And on, uh, on DraftKings, I was able to cash in the big one on, on DraftKings. Uh, playing, uh, I, you know, I took the stand. I, I put, took uh, nobody from the Philly Colorado game. I stacked Houston. They didn't, they, they did nicely. I got, uh, I played a couple of bottom of the order Dodger guys who ran a little poor, but not bad. And what I was really happy with was I played Aaron Nola because you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, whatever, he didn't do that great. But, but the fact is he was like 3% owned. And if I'm going to get him at 3% owned, I'm going to take that literally, literally every time. So I was able to do a garner enough Astros points with Jordan Alvarez balling out to to uh, to get me there in the uh, in in the big one, which was good. I had gone on like a, a pretty decent uh, streak of not cashing in that big one, so I'm really happy about that. And they're ready to move on to to the slate. Yep, let's get into it. Um, all right, let's uh, pull your screen up and we'll go game by game because it's a, you know it's a pretty big slate. It's going to have the same sort of concentrated uh, ownership on the Colorado game, which, as you pointed out, fading can sometimes be a good idea. And uh, let's we'll we'll see where it ends up by the end of the day. But I do want to uh, I do I do want to say about the first game we have to talk about the Arizona Washington game. It's just going to be hard to to figure out. It's a doubleheader, but we don't know who's pitching. And it you know projected I Gray and and Bumgarner. If that's the case, I would have some interest in Gray to be honest with you as a little bit of a contrarian. I think I, think, I think they're going in the first game. The doubleheader. But, but my yeah my guess is that that they could just as easily go in the first game. So I don't. I don't want to touch this until we know what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, playing, but I'll touch on that one at six Eastern time. Um, yeah, I'm currently not. Um, I don't believe I'm getting too much of that. Uh, anyway, uh, it's hard to know though because, like, right, right. Yeah, how could, it's hard can we measure. It? It's actually good hitting. I mean, it's 51 degrees, but the wind's blowing out like crazy. Um, uh, it's hard. It's really hard to know <laughs> unless we know his pitching. You have Arizona, right. one of the best, worst pitching staffs in baseball. Um, so it could be a spot we want to visit later you, on. You got you got to pause this a second. Sorry, no problem, no problem. But anyway, so for now we'll we'll, we'll, we'll skip that one. We'll cover that one at six Eastern, and then we'll uh, jump over to Toronto and Boston. Um, yeah. Sheet, what are your thoughts about this one? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm not getting the, to too much of either of these pitchers. You know, Kikuchi or Ivaldi. I mean, they just priced Ivaldi too high relative to his matchup. But uh, I just don't think I'm going to do that. Um, if either one, I would say Kikuchi would be a little more viable just because of the price, but I just think there are better options, um, on the slate, um, with respect to the hitting, um, yeah, I mean, I got Boston and Toronto on a raw basis are, are right up there, you know, uh, with the, with the, with the non Coors games, you know, so, so I think Boston and Toronto just on raw numbers actually do rate to be the top two um, of the non-cores, but they're expensive. So from a value perspective, they don't look all that terrific. Um, and then we get back to, again, okay, do you need the value? I mean, what types of pitchers are you playing? You know, I, I'm probably going to pay up for pitching somewhat where maybe I'm going to need value. So I don't know if I'm going to get to Toronto and Boston, but on, on a pure basis, Toronto and Boston do rate to score, you know, a decent amount of fantasy points. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, I don't really love picking on either of these pitchers. You got it's it's cold in Boston, but the wind's blowing out like it's supposed to be blowing out like 15 miles an hour to center field. Uh, always a little bit of a boost, uh, but 
as of right now, it's it's more of a of a one off situation for me that I'm looking at. I think I, I mean I still think Kikuchi is actually a pretty good pitcher. Uh, I don't know if I want to pay these prices for these guys. I think JD Martinez is always a good one off against lefties. I know that it wasn't the year we we've seen from him in the past, and you've got a lot of good a lot of good hitters against lefties. You know, even uh, you know Kiki Hernandez, uh, Trevor Story. Uh, even Bobby Dahlbeck and Christian Arroyo, like they, uh, uh, Xander Bogarts, they just have a lot of guys who can hit lefties. Even Verdugo is just as good as left against lefties as he is against righties. And Devers has the same power, basically. So if you want to make a Boston stack, I'm completely okay with it. Um, I just don't entirely love picking all the way on Kikuchi. Uh, that's my only, my only sort of reservation. And then Toronto, we talk about it all the time. You've got a hard-throwing right-hander against a team that hits hard-throwing right-handers. So, Uh-oh. <laughs> um, but the problem is, like, he's 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 a good one. It's not like he's a, we're, we're, not a bad pitcher. So, I I I'm looking more at one offs for Boston and Toronto than I am, or maybe a mini stack than I am a full stack. Um, all right, let's jump over to uh, Tampa Bay, Chicago, and I am going to have to grab my weather real quick. Yep. See what's happening there. And yeah, we have the wind blowing in pretty much. It's 42 degrees. Um, it looks like a huge home run suppression. So I would say you definitely don't want to be playing hitters in this game on this slate. And I think it makes a pitcher that I would not have probably considered, but a guy who you threw out there before, I think Justin Steele is, is going to be a little bit in play for me. Um, I, I don't think, I don't expect Whistler to pitch more than an inning or two. Um, actually, I don't even expect it to go two. I think it'll be just one inning. So I don't know who the long, the long man is going to be for Tampa Bay, but uh, you might, might want to consider that guy, depending on what we find out later on today. Justin Steele, 7,600. It's not an ideal price. It's not like an awesome, awesome play, but you're you're playing against the weather to some extent, and you're playing against, you know, you have a pitcher who they haven't faced before. So that's pretty much all I have for this one. Yep. Uh, I didn't quite get to Steele today, but, you know, uh, again, when you get that weather going on, there's just literally, uh, you know, there, there's no – there's. <laughs> you can't just completely dismiss it. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep an eye on it, but right now I, don't, I think I have better options than steel and I am not going to get to any of the, uh, I don't think I'm going to get to any of the hitters. Yeah. How good. I mean, McClanahan put up a monster game yesterday. Sure he was in my, my secondary line on my two fifty, not my, not my seven, not seven, seven. Um, all right. Now we have the chalk pitcher of the slate. I think it's good chalk. Uh, you have a guy who's got a, I think it's a two, I think his strikeout prop is two above everybody else. Um, he's 10.5. He's expensive, but Corbin Burns is, shouldn't be that hard to get in. And then I think there's going to be some interest in Brubaker, by the way. Um, I personally am not going to go that way. I'm just going to say this Milwaukee lineup has looked definitely hit or miss at times. And I don't, I don't, I'm not totally opposed to it. I am. If I wanted to get creative with the pitcher, I thought Brubaker was an option. I don't know that we need to do that again. It's more of a, max entry 10 or you know 20 entry whatever you maybe he makes some of my lineups then but uh that's what i have this as and and it was nice to see for a change uh christian yelich actually have a good night i i I can't even remember the last time when christian yelich who was popular had a night like every other time i'm used to seeing like five fantasy points four fantasy points two fantasy points and uh he had a big game last night at the home run um I, i i again milwaukee totally viable to me but uh, I don't know where they're going to end up by the end of the slate in terms of stacks for me. How about you? Yeah, um, I agree with um, with Burns. I have him as my uh, I have him as my top uh, my top pitcher as well, um, and he's going to be highly owned. And I think it's good chalk as well. Um, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to get to Brew Baker. Uh, I, I do have Milwaukee as one of the non-course stacks that I, I'm interested in. Um, and you know, it depends on ownership. It depends on a lot of things, but they're certainly in play for me. Um, they're, they're hit or miss, like you said. So if for hit or miss teams, if they're low owned, I'll try to hope it's a hit. If they end up being owned, I'll hope it's miss. <laughs> it's the, way, the way I'm looking at it. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, Brube- I'm Brubaker, uh, Burns, definitely. I, okay, so I have three guys that I like a lot, uh, and Burns is one of them. And so we'll get to the other two later. But I do have Burns my top. Yeah, it's, it's hard to argue. He, he did throw 97 pitches his last outing for those people who are worried about pitch counts. 
there are some guys who are going to be extended a little bit more than others. And now if he struggles, I'm not going to pro- make any promises, but if, if things are going the way that we want them to go, I think Corbin Burns is a, is a really, you know, he's just a really, really strong play. Um, all right. You ready to move on to Minnesota and KC? One thing also I like about playing hitters in Milwaukee, I'm just going to point this out. We, because of all these weird weather things, it is nice to have like a, not just a dome, but a dome where you actually have like a good hitters dome. So uh, that does make Milwaukee a little bit more appealing on, on today's slate than, than normal. Uh, all right. Uh, Minnesota Casey, what do you got? Yeah, this is going to be one of those where you, you're going to, I'm trying to think of exactly what you're going to say, but I'm trying to figure this out. So when, when I tell you that, that, that I might end up playing some Chris Archer, um, no problem. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to say, we got to think to ourselves, what are we doing here playing Chris Archer? I, I don't know if that, that was going to happen. Um, but he certainly, he certainly looks like a decent point per dollar play. Um, and, uh, right now it doesn't look like people are playing him. We'll see, we'll see how it picks up, uh, throughout the course of the day. But if I, if I do end up deciding to, to, uh, to spend up in a lot of hitting, uh, I, I, I'll definitely consider him along with another cheapo later. Uh, and as far as the hitting goes, I'd like to think that I would be getting to some of this, but I'm just not, um, I don't knock into Hernandez, knock into the hitting. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not exactly true. I apologize. Uh, Minnesota, I'm definitely good. Um, I, I don't know why I didn't notice that. Minnesota, as a matter of fact, if you consider like price and everything, I have them actually rated as my top stat. Uh, they're definitely not like rating to score the most of everybody, but I guess because some of these guys are probably really cheap, that's why they're showing up that way. So I'm yeah, definitely yeah. going to probably have a decent amount of that. Yeah, uh, I don't think, I mean, they're, they're, they're psychotically cheap, but uh terrible hitting weather um okay. you know it's a from suppressing like almost 40 percent of power that, that, like which is really bad but also not really helping pitchers that much which is kind of interesting it's like those weird those weird win games um so with DraftKings, what points go to die <laughs> yeah like kepler at 2900 batting cleanup is kind of hard to just completely ignore though um i don't want to play these guys but if I just just give me them anywhere else at this price and I and I'm in and if the weather changes at all I probably will jump onto Minnesota um but as of right now I've got Minnesota with a question mark and I don't think Hernandez is all that bad of a pitcher just the price points are I mean really egregious like you've only got one player above 4k you've only got one player above 3k one other player above 3k so seven guys below 3k um and these are like Tell me, I mean, Gary, Gary Sanchez can hit home runs. Max Kepler can hit home runs. Miguel Sano can hit home runs. Trevor, Trevor Larnich can hit home runs. And these guys cost nothing. So maybe even if you're not playing the stack, I do think you can fill out some pieces with some of these bats. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, the Angels and Houston. And uh, two, two guys who I actually like pitching. Um, not, not necessarily on today's slate, but I think are decent enough pitchers in general that has me just uh, interested enough to maybe not get on this game. Uh, although I may, I always end up revisiting and, and kind of wanting a Houston stack by the end of the day, Houston used to have all the righty punisher, the lefty punishers. Now they've got all the lefties in their lineups, but uh, I, I like Sandoval in general as a real life pitcher. And I don't think he's like spectacular. I think he's really solid. So it has me enough to, to, to not make Houston a priority, but they are on my secondary list. How about you? Yeah, um, I, th- I think for me, I- I'm going to steal what you said in that these pitchers, while I'm not going to play them on the slate, they're just good enough to keep me off the hitting. Um, that, that's, that's, that's my take, actually. Um, and so I'm probably going to hope this is, uh, this is just a, you know, a 5-3 game that nobody wins playing. That, that's going to be my, that's gonna be my, my, my hope. Yeah, for what it's worth, also, Houston is um, going to be completely unowned. Just throwing that out there. So just if we want to change our mind and take a chance against Sandoval, I think that 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 could be – it's a huge upside lineup, right, like in Houston. And I'm just going to mention that Valdez put up 29 fantasy points the last time these two teams played, and that was on that was his first start of the year. So, again, I'm not going to do it myself probably with Valdez today but because I prefer Burns and Bueller, but – I, I definitely think he's at least in consideration, but I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't have him as a priority of any kind. And then we get to the Philadelphia-Colorado sheets. What, what do you want to do today with this one? 
Well, they they it looks very uh, it looks very similar actually um, based on the numbers uh, as it did uh, yesterday. Although it, it shouldn't, right? I mean, Fre- Freeland's a better pitcher than Cool. Um, yep. So I would imagine that that the Phillies, you know, should be a little worse uh, this today than they were yesterday. Um, forget about the results. I'm just talking about like what they're, you know, how they're projecting yeah, yeah. or whatever. Um, but for whatever reason, they're they're showing up as as pretty much the same, um, which is not that's not a lot of respect for Freeland, if you want to know the truth. So. Probably going to do the same thing as yesterday. I'm probably just not going to play them. Um, they're just the ownership is just way, it's just too high for me. Um, and I, I don't know where I'm going to be differentiating pitching wise to make that work for me. So I, I just I probably just not going to play them. And um, uh, Gibson could Gibson could have a problem. I think in this game, um, if, if I remember correctly, he does he can be prone to give up hard contact and. Um, that could be a that could be a problem. Uh, Blackman took Nola deep, annoying as it was. Uh, <laughs> nice to see for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that ball does fly there, so I would probably prefer Colorado to Philly um, from this game. And uh, I'm not going to be so bold as to play through these pitchers. Yeah, it's funny because like Gibson's obviously a much better pitcher than Freeland is, and Philadelphia is a much better hitting team than Colorado is. So. I do think you'll get lower ownership on Colorado. Um, and, and by the way, I want to point out that even with the, the things with Philly last night, yeah, they didn't, they had a terrible night. I, I actually thought that the ownership on the bottom of the order was way too low. Um, they had guys at four, three, 4%. Really? Yeah. I know this. Yeah. Stott uh, was, was, I think he was 3% and he's probably, or stole whatever his name is. Um, what did that Veerling go off? Was he under 5% too? I'm sure he was like one or 2%. Okay. Um, so I, I do think this is going to end up, you know, you're going to have ways you can get different in the stacks. And if we're going to play the bottom of orders, you should be probably playing the ones in course. If you're going to get the same ownership as you are other places, uh, like yesterday, the Dodgers bottom of the order obviously was higher owned than the Phillies bottom of the order. Yeah, sure was. So, um, so yeah, so, so it's, again, I want to see what Philly what kind of lineup Philly comes out with. They do tend to, to give us their lineups a little bit earlier than something's like, we're going to see it a half hour before lock. I don't think. Um, this is not basketball, so we should know a few hours beforehand. So hopefully we'll know before lock. But I do like I, I do like Philly and Colorado. Uh, they obviously project the best. And Gibson's, you know, like you said, he gives up hard contact. And I, I think there's a lot of different ways you could stack this, especially the Colorado side, without getting too much low ownership. So these are definitely the, you know, if, in terms of expected runs produced, uh, these would be right up there for me. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do. If you're going to take – if you're going to, you know, fade, I don't think you have to fully fade the game. I do think Rio Muto and Castellanos will stand out. And I think they'll be the most popular. I think Bryce Harper and Kyle, especially Kyle Schwarber is going to be low owned. So like Kyle Schwarber, you might get it like 3% ownership in a, in cores. And I'll just play that. Like, you know what I mean? So if I can get different with a stack, I don't need to try and find a creative second stack to, to get off of what I think is going to be the best stack. Now, I don't feel so adamant that against Freeland that it's an automatic lock. So, but again, there aren't, there aren't a whole lot of, there's, there's no other near five run totals unless we talk about the Pittsburgh game against Brubaker, which is the, uh, the Milwaukee game, I should say against Brubaker. So I, I do think this game is going to, is going to stand out. And um, yeah, it's hard for me not, it's hard for me to disagree, even though it hasn't really hit the, the ceilings that we've seen so far in cores. I don't know that I'm going to play it the most, but it does rate to be the best, obviously. One of the reasons why um, Real Muto would rate to be kind of lower on today as opposed to yesterday is, is remember ownership of these stats, and these hitters, hitters, it's got to be thought of in the context of the pitching slate. So like last night you had two mid-range, you know, cheap pitchers that were looking, that looked really, really good with Montas and Manaya. So you could be able to, to play all those, you know, those, those, those hitters, regardless of price, pretty much however you want it. So, so that's why those guys are going to be really popular. But tonight when you have, you know, Burns and, and some other guys, like as, as, as guys you probably want to play, um, you know, it's not so easy to pay 6K, 5K, 550, 500 throughout the, throughout the course of the stat. Yeah, I do think Rio Muto is going to be more popular than yesterday, personally, um, just because the lefty righty split and the fact that he stands out as being significantly the best catcher. But I, I hear you, I hear, I hear your point in general, for sure. Um, I just think tonight might be a little bit different. Um, all right. Texas and Seattle. 
you know, Sheets, this is the uh, the Robbie Ray conundrum. Uh, I don't even know what happened to him. He, he got just crushed all over the place. Still, I know him. what happened. What? Okay, so I have a little bit of uh, information on this game. So I, I this was a this was a day where I wasn't going to be playing, or actually I wasn't going to be around, but I was going to play stuff anyway. So I put in lineups, and then I just kind of left. And um, and when I and and I forgot who I played, and then when I came back, I'm like, oh my god, I played freaking the Seattle freaking. I played Robbie Ray. This game is supposed to rain out. Why am I even doing this? And it was like two degrees, like pouring rain. Like the game was like orange red on on what's his name's thing yeah and then next thing you know they're like saying okay let's play and that's why one of the reasons why he was like my four percent owned because nobody played because it became what's supposed to happen it was freaking it was a freaking quagmire there he was you could see he was totally uncomfortable he was it was the whole game was freaking soaking wet and he had no shot okay so he got you know, listen he got lit up against chicago whatever but 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 the, i i'm willing to throw that whole freaking game away if you want to know the truth so um, I'll, I'll go right back. Interesting. Um, I understand. I think both of these stacks are in play. Um, you have a very high variance pitcher in Ray and no one is going to try and play anybody against him. Maybe it's getting a little too creative. Um, but I just think for a guy who we've seen certainly have like bad games. Now it is Seattle. Obviously I'm just going to take a quick look at my, there's nothing wrong with Seattle, by the way. They're not bad. What? No, no, no. Yeah, no. I'm saying the game's in Seattle. Oh, okay. Um, so, what we're whether or not? Let me just make sure that they have the roof closed or open. Um, let me see if I have that in front of me. Um, sorry, this is kind of important to me because I, I am curious if that. Yeah. So they're not gonna they're not gonna have it open. Okay, whatever. Um, I've been there. I've, I've been there a couple times when it's been either. So I, I just wanted to check. Um, I'm guessing the roof will be closed. It looks like obviously. And then you have, I, I think that you could take shots against Ray here. I, I like Simeon. I like Garcia. I always like Seager. I don't care about lefty lefty matchups. So that that's my sneaky stack for the day is Texas. And I don't mind if you want to take pieces of Seattle as well, uh, against gray. I think Mitch Hanniger is wait, was he not in the lineup tonight? Did I miss something? I didn't uh, notice. Well, he's a lot less interesting to me now. Um, if a he's not less, if he's not playing, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so less interested. He was a big part of what I what, what I would have wanted. I would have played he and like Suarez and considered some other things. But I think as of right now, I would probably stay away from Seattle. But I, I but I will take shots against Robbie Ray, and I absolutely have no problem pitching Robbie Ray either. Robbie Ray is going to be really really popular. By the way, I think he's going to be more popular than the other guys we're talking about, except for Burns. Yeah, I I think that he's going to be the second most popular. Except for maybe this guy um, in this next game, and that would be Musgrove uh, against Cincinnati. Musgrove has looked basically as good as you can look so far in this yeah. young season, and uh, Cincinnati hasn't hasn't shown any ability to hit the ball on the road. So I like Musgrove. Um, I would have him as the natural SP two, and I am always going to to keep looking at trying to find a way to get some of these power. I did have a couple of Machado lineups last night. You have your San Martin guy. We'll see if they let him actually start or if he comes out of the bullpen. He looked better against the Dodgers, you right. know, had the, had the opener uh, rather than the first time out against Atlanta. But I, I'm willing to take some shots against this guy uh, against a, for a pretty right dominant lineup. So San Diego is another one that's uh, maybe a, a get a little creative stack for me. Um, and I like Musgrove. That's where I'm at on this one. How about you? Yeah, it's the three. It's 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 Burns, Ray, and Musgrove um, are the three pitchers, uh, and and all of them. I have all of them over thirty percent right now ownership. Um, yep. And you know, uh, that's the way that's going to be. Um, if you want to pivot, you got to go somewhere else. We, we, there are still some. There are still some some guys you can play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, first of all, the Reds are very cheap. If you feel like uh, being a real pain in the neck. <laughs> uh, if you want to play against Musgrove, uh, there you can play the Aquino. He's still twenty two hundred or something like that. It's guys you can play on the Reds if you feel like it. But I kind of like the idea of playing San Diego um, against uh, against what's his name against Mart San Martin if he's starting. Uh, you know, they did they they did right by him. They brought him in as a, as a, as a you know as a long reliever. He had a very very nice game against the Dodgers. 
Um, and you know, like you know, the guy's not bad, but I agree with you. I think it's, I think the Padres are going to be very very low owned, and uh, I'm 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 into that. I think that's I think that's a really good idea actually. Yeah, particularly Machado's price is like a, way too low. Uh, at, what is it? It's under five k. Yeah, he's forty six hundred, yeah. and um, it's just you know, and then and then Luke Voigt has been terrible, but I who cares? It's a small sample size, and uh, I do have him as another one of the guys, and and Nola is a reasonable catching option. I would point out that like usually games in San Diego, well, obviously not a great hitters park. They have made it more. They have made it a little more hitter friendly for righties. The problem is that we're not used to San Diego games playing in 61 degree temperatures, which is what the, what it's supposed to be pretty much throughout the night tonight. They're usually, we're usually like mid seventies, low eighties for San Diego um, as the summer comes around. So not quite as great a hitting conditions as we, as we usually get for San Diego, even though it's again, not a great hitters park, but we don't have the warm weather to back up, back us up. So just throwing that out there. Uh, all right. Uh, Baltimore and Oakland. Uh, I think Cole Irvin is completely in play here and I don't think he's going to be that popular and if it's, it's just a different type of build uh maybe by the end of the day he will be he has given up some some power but I I actually could see an argument for almost like every side of this game you sort of have a bullpen game with Baltimore which is sort of what they throw out every night feels like uh you're gonna have some cheap options and guys like Beth and Court uh Mancini is 2800 and was 0.4% owned last night. And I know that because I played him <laughs> um, because it never replayed Montas. So in my non Montas lineup, but without you, it would have been only 0.3. I know exactly. Um, I, I, I could get behind one offs from especially uh, Mancini. Uh, Chirinos is really cheap, but he's probably going to be batting at the bottom of the order. Um, I'm not really interested in Mullins as in the lefty lefty as much, but I, I do think you could make like an argument for Mount Castle Mancini, especially um and then on the oakland side i i think that you know you're gonna have you could have a really cheap either secondary or primary stack against a team that has a terrible well we, we believe has a terrible bullpen we believe is just terrible all around and you've got guys like bethancourt batting fifth at 2k minimum you've got uh mckinney at 2600 batting cleanup um you if it, if it goes like it did yesterday even kemp and anders are really cheap seth brown Sheldon Noose, the guy's got power. Uh, and then Sean Murphy's the one guy you'd have to spend up on. But I could get behind playing some Oakland here today. So these later games, I think, are a little bit more where I'm preferring my, my stacks uh, so far. Uh, I agree with that, actually. I agree with what you said. I like, I think that Urban is, is in play. Um, you know, again, it depends. <laughs> I agree with what you said about the bill. It depends which, what, what you want to do. You know, that's why I, when I was talking about Chris Archer, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have to do it. But if I do have to do it, I wouldn't mind playing him. And, and same with Cole Irvin for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do like that. And I also, I do like the Oakland side um, a little bit. Uh, why not? And, and, and Baltimore also. So, yeah, this could be, a, you know, a little sneaky late night game to get some, get some juice out of. Now, again, I'm not, I'm not telling you you're going to win the slate playing Cole Irvin. You know what I mean? But, but maybe the hitters that you access by playing Cole Irvin can help you win the slate. You know? and, right. You know, you're going to win the slate because Cole Irvin gets 12 fantasy points probably, you know, <laughs> and, and, and be the lowest scoring player on your, on your, on your, on your entire lineup, you know? Um, so uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, let, let's, let's get on to uh, a good baseball game. Uh, maybe uh, a good pitching matchup between two really good pitchers. Um, Freed against Bueller. Uh, you want to, uh, you want to seek me some, some weather uh, information? Hey, Google, what will the temperature at Dodger Stadium be at 8 p.m.? Currently in Dodger Stadium, I don't know 61 why do. degrees and sunny. I think that's Today what it's going to be. Sunny with a forecasted high of 73 and a low of 50. I think it's going to be like in the low 60s. So so I was watching last night and I was, uh, you know, I had I had I had late uh, late lineup Dodger action. And man, like like Lux, he, he got a hold of one. It looked like it was out. And even the guys like Bellinger was like, like shaking his head. How did that knock it out? And it wasn't even close. I mean, like it barely made the warning track. And, and uh, so I, I, I'm like an idiot. Like I'm like one of those people that, that, that we, that we complained about. I, I, I whined in this where I'm like, damn Dodger stadium. I'm like, Eric, you played them. I mean, you knew, I mean, like, you know, you're not playing at, at Coors, you know, it's not so easy 
getting the ball out of Dodger Stadium in 60 degree weather. You know, it's not not the easiest thing in the world to dead center. Uh, so, uh, and against Max Fried, uh, Max Fried is, is a really good pitcher. So I think that um, I'm probably only going to have 10% Dodgers, but I am going to have 10% Dodgers just on principle. Um, and that's, the, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, pitching wise, it's just the ultimate perfect freaking pivot, isn't it, to play Bueller? Mm-hmm. You know, like, he's way too expensive. He's not as good of a play as Burns. But, but, right? <laughs> Whatever. You know? Maybe Burns doesn't do well. You know, maybe Bueller scores 25 fantasy points. Certainly has it in him, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely going to have some of that. I'm going to have some Bueller. I'm going to have some Dodgers. I'm not going to expect to win with either of them, but I'm definitely having some. Yeah, I get the arguments, for, certainly for the Dodgers side in general. Uh, I just would point out that Freed has been pretty good against these Dodgers, including several playoff runs, which don't even show up on the BVP history because this doesn't okay. count as regular season. So, um, and depending on which side you look at, it, of course. But uh, Freed also, like if a guy without a uh, without a high K rate has like a 35% K rate or 33% K rate against the Dodgers. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, as a, as a, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to play free against the Dodgers here, but I, you know, you see the Dodgers with, with less. Than you see those lefties, man. They, they swing for the fences for the, for the Dodgers. I'm not surprised. But it's not. Well, they've got right. I mean, their righties are as good as anybody's too. I mean, it's not like they just have lefties. I'm, 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 well, I bet you, Fred, where Freed's getting the strikeouts from the lefties. No, it's it's Betts is the highest. Betts is five out oh, of really? that's um, yeah. It's and Justin Turner's the second highest, so oh, it's wow. actually the opposite. Um, because of the change up he throws, it actually kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, but look, it always is going to be okay to, to, to I'm never going to say no. I, I completely agree that, like, we, there was some argument, conversation going on in our Discord about, you know, finding the teams that you stack every day. And I, and look, if you're multi lineup entering, that's a really good, I, I think it's actually a really healthy way to do it. I think you, you find the teams with the most power that, that's run, that, that runs are most produced from, uh, some sort of a power speed combination. The Dodgers would be at near the at or near the top every year, and and this year certainly is no different. They're significantly better than every other team in baseball. Um, Toronto would be the other one, and and then you could just argue over the Yankees and Boston and all those teams and decide which other ones you want to get involved in. But you don't want to just say, okay, well, I'm just, that's just all I'm going to do because I I don't think you're going to, then you have to get it right. And if you're only playing one lineup, it's, it's just going to be very hard to win doing that. But if you're playing, if you're playing multiple lineups and you're playing 10% of it, like every day, basically, I think this is a, another day where you could do that. And I am fine with Bueller. Um, it's a little, I did like that he threw 98 pitches. I think that maybe he has a, as good a chance or potentially better on FanDuel the, of getting the, the six innings and the quality start than these other guys do. So maybe you could argue for him on FanDuel as the as your only pitcher at 9700. Um, but that's that's pretty much you know it's it's not it's it's Max Fried is one guy who in the soft tossing left top the soft tossing left lefties. I pointed this out every year with the Dodgers. Yeah. It's the one thing that they sometimes struggle with are these weird soft tossing toss. And I don't mean like they throw like no nothing, but I mean guys who are throwing junk balls or whatever from the lefty side. It just they they seem to whatever reason have the have the Dodgers number. We saw it with Blake Snell last year a few times. Remember when everybody was stacking the Dodgers and Blake Snell goes out there and throws a gem at one percent owned, um, almost had a no hitter in one of them, I believe. Remember that? Yeah, um, I think it was while well, well, I was in New York with with with, with you guys. Um, I think so. Um, anyway, since you, brought, since you brought it up, by the way, um, about Fanduel. Yeah. I'm looking at FanDuel, and the one pitcher that stands out for me is a huge difference there as opposed to DraftKings is Eovaldi. Like, Eovaldi is 7,800 over there um, as opposed to much more expensive on DraftKings. He's, still, he's not like my favorite player over there, but that's the one that, that gets more of a boost for me. I still like I still like Burns and Ray over there, uh, but uh, you definitely get a little more of a boost from Eovaldi. Yeah, I, I like the Burns and Ray thing, although I have to say I, I'm a little bit tempted to go on the Bueller side, maybe on, on FanDuel, and hope he gets the the quality start and that maybe that Burns just doesn't doesn't go out there and throw a gem. We've seen we've seen Burns run into trouble a little bit at times. Sure. Um, and no one's gonna play Musgrove, I don't think, on FanDuel. So just sort of throwing that out there is kind of interesting because he's he's the guy who's had the quality. Eleven thousand. He's eleven K over there, so it's gonna be hard. Um uh, but yeah, uh, on FanDuel, that, that's the major thing that, that, that changed for me. I mean, the stacks are pretty similar. 
but you've got like, like again, Rowdy tell us who I like playing him better on FanDuel because I have the utility spot. He's 2,400 yeah. standout play. Christian Yelich is 2.9, which means he's going to be all of Milwaukee. I mean, yeah, pretty much Milwaukee in general, I guess you could just say. Um, but they, they definitely stand out as being, as being the stack you want. So the way I've got my stacks for today are uh, on DraftKings, I've got Philly one, Colorado two, Milwaukee three, um, with probably Texas as my get weird, which I still, I really might go with this. Like, this is what I like to do with Robbie Ray. You have a guy who, who walk, who can't, who you can run on, who walks people and who gives up home runs. Um, he, when he's on, he's really hard to hit, but we've seen the other side of it. And, you know, just look, look at the last game. I'll take three home runs off of my starting pitcher, you know, um, especially with today's stacks. Uh, so I, so I really do like the, uh, the Texas stack, uh, as, as a long shot one and San Diego and Oakland are my other ones while I want to see what happens with the weather in Boston and Minnesota. Right. Right. So that, yeah, that's Boston, Boston, Boston gets a little bit of a bump for me on FanDuel. Um, yep. And, uh, but it's Philly and Milwaukee, my top ones over there. Yeah, I have Milwaukee as my number one on FanDuel, followed by, I don't even know if it's followed by Philly and Colorado, to be honest with you, because I do think the pricing is enough of a difference where I could make some arguments for, for the Boston thing, like you said. So I, I could see getting away from, from those Philly and, and Colorado things easier on FanDuel. And it's going to be okay to get away with from it anyway. You could literally never play cores and you probably could be a profitable player. But I do think that the right way to, you know, we're trying to make to, to make to make everything makes the most sense that day. I do think having some pieces of Philly of uh, of Colorado is going to, I'm definitely going to have some pieces of it. I just don't know if I'll I'll fade it in some lineups. But for the most part, with the 73 degrees in Colorado, wind blowing out 13 miles an hour, now they have to actually hit the ball. It turns out sheets because that's what they didn't do yesterday was hit the ball. They did not. If they hit the ball, then I think we're in business. But. Uh, but yeah, so and I, and I, and I have uh, I have Burns and Musgrove as my one and two pitchers on DraftKings and on FanDuel. I'm still debating between the Burns, uh, Bueller, and potentially Robbie Ray. Um, that's where I'm at. Any final thought sheets before we uh, jump over and, and uh, do a new video on basketball? No, we're I'm good. All right. Well, good luck to everybody tonight. I'll be live at six Eastern. Sheets, are you going to be able to join me? Um, probably not, but maybe we'll see. Okay, well, as soon as you can let me know, let me know. And if if, you, okay. if not, maybe we'll get Rody in here and get Rody talking some. some oh, actually, things. you know what? Six today, three thirty. Yeah, I, I I think I will be able to make it. Actually. Okay, great, great. Well, that's wonderful. Um, and all right, guys. Well, we'll see you at six Eastern. Jump into the Discord, and uh, please, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And good luck to everybody today.